What up, what up, what up, y'all? This is Christina from Carl Lewis Richmond, and I'm here with the wonderful Miss Gwendolyn, CEO of Moyo Institute. And today we are talking about, Lord, I just forgot the title already. <laughs> so much going on in my mind right now. Um, we're talking about kickstarting momentum. There you go. To move into action. Yes, yes, yes. So we've been talking over the past couple of weeks about being stuck and the idea of being stuck in all realms, physically, mentally, emotionally. And so before we get started in today's topic, we always do a little grounding work, which baby, I need it today. <laughs> so I'm gonna let Miss Gwendolyn take it away. Thank you, Christina. You're welcome. Thank you, Christina. Okay, so let's sit with our feet flat on the floor, spine erect. Feel free to have your hands resting skyward on your lap. So really receptive mode. And take a deep breath in. And exhale. Another. And exhale. One more. And exhale. invite you now to connect with the God of your understanding, however you relate to Source. Take a deep breath in and feel your connection with Source. Deep breath in, connect with your higher sacred self, recognizing that we're more than simply physical bodies. breath in and let us connect with the divine presence that is animating all of existence. Now take a deep breath in and connect with your ancestors. Feel your connection at the heart level. Gratitude for everything that they have endured so that we might be here today. And deep breath in, let's connect with the great compassionate light. This is the light, this beautiful golden white light that we will meet at the end of our journey here on earth. allow yourself to feel that connection as it's establishing. Feel the great compassionate light and draw it into your body from your crown down to your feet. Feel your bottom on your seat. Feel your feet on the floor if you're in a chair. And feel the light going from the bottom of your feet, connecting you to the earth, anchoring you to Mother Earth. Take a deep breath in and exhale. And whenever you're ready, you may open your eyes. So welcome, welcome. I see we have some people in the room, well, in the virtual room. Welcome, you guys. So let's go ahead and get started, Ms. Gwendolyn. Thank you, Christina. Thank you all for being here today. We really appreciate your showing up, and thank you for your patience with us. I was running a little bit late today, so my apologies. Mm -hmm. um, we are talking about being stuck, and all the ways that we stay stuck, unable to move, unable to move forward, unable to create the kinds of uh, situations that nourish us, support us, and help us with our growth. Mm -hmm. And uh, today we want to 
just um, uh, close out that part of it and um, by talking about a couple other items that uh, come up from time to time and then really move into how we can kickstart momentum into action. Mm -hmm. So we want to start by uh, talking about one of the things that we tend to do which causes us to stay stuck which is we compare ourselves to others. Woo! <laughs> you know, <laughs> and we we look at others that we feel are like more talented, more gifted, more skilled. Sorry, my That's dress okay. is long, so I'm trying to be able to see you while I'm. Yes, and it's a pretty dress. Thank so. you. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like I'm rolling over it. <laughs> my bad. So we are. We tend to sort of diminish our own uh, uh, capacity and capability when we are comparing ourselves to others. Mm -hmm. What I would like for us to be aware of is that every single person has unique skills and gifts and, and a contribution to make to this life that we're living mm -hmm. collectively. And so we need to know that when we move into that mm, tendency to compare and think, well, you know, she does that so well, or. I don't think I can do it that way. Mm -hmm. It's not necessary for you to do it that way. Yes. You'll be doing your, your unique way. self. Mm -hmm. And Christina, you know a lot about that. Yes. <laughs> you show up as you. You show up as you. And it's very, you're very much in alignment with what I've been teaching in brand therapy, a workshop series with Richard Main Street about as a business owner, your idea may not be new, but the way you do it is new Absolutely. because nobody's ever done it like you so yeah you may like uh, and i was making comparisons to, like water how much water is on the shelf in the store mm -hmm. water should show one essential function which is to hydrate however we all have our specific kinds of waters that we like for a reason because that water attaches to us in whatever way or capacity yeah and so you know aquafina is not looking at fuji and saying well i'm trying to be like fuji aquafina is just aquafina in the same capacity as business owners we need to show up as ourselves and then just the self in and of itself to mm -hmm. show up as ourselves as business owners and as people mm -hmm. you know and employees and as as um, contractors you know however we happen to be as volunteers, as we're working in the community and sharing our gifts, we have something to contribute and we should be aware of the tendency to diminish ourselves when we compare to others. Absolutely. So, want to invite everyone to move out of comparison. I say comparison is the thief of joy. Absolutely. It's a thief of energy too, because if you spend so much time trying to be like, you never become. That's right, that's right. Mm -hmm. The other thing that sometimes keeps us stuck is fear of external judgment. Mm -hmm. You know, we are looking for acknowledgement, acceptance uh, from our peers, from our community, from our family. And um, we may have a path that's totally different from anyone that we know. You know, we may have, we may be ordained essentially mm -hmm. to be here in these bodies in this way and to uh, show up in, mm -hmm. in that way. So often we will get stuck with not being able to move forward because we fear external judgment. Yes, and I can say, you know, this Gwendolyn's been around me for a long time now. But I can say that starting my journey, it was a fear of not doing the journey like other folks, especially like growing up in a Christian household and not seeing God in the same capacities or even the self-discovery journey in the same capacity as my parents. And one thing I realized later is that the road that I've been able to do, my parents never got to do because exactly. they were raising kids in their 20s, whereas I'm 32 now, I'll be 33 this year. I still have been yet to be blessed to be a mother, but I've got to spend a lot of time with myself. Exactly. So it was like, it, it was the judgment part was scary because I was like, oh, they're not going to love me or they're not going to support me. And it's like, no, they just didn't understand it because that's not the path they got to do. Exactly. And once I kind of moved outside of their fear mm -hmm. and stopped owning their fear, it has allowed me to do a lot of stuff I never personally would have imagined for myself. In fact, I remember my mom saying to me once, um, I'm getting to travel through you. 
Yes. You know, it's sort of like, yeah. you know, I get a chance to experience all these places because you go there. Yes. And you bring back your experiences and pictures and videos. Mm -hmm. And, you know, she was busy uh, rearing 10 children. Yes. <laughs> so she didn't have the opportunity, <laughs> opportunity to yeah. really do um, the things that are available to us today. Yes. So, I mean, when you kind of look at it through that lens, a lot of the fear of from others is their own lack of understanding because that's something they can't, they can't fathom and so you don't have to own that acknowledge it I understand it now because it's actually created deeper relationships to my parents and a lot more grace mm -hmm. <laughs> for both of us exactly um, but you don't have to own it exactly mm -hmm. the other thing that really um, keeps us stuck sometimes is um, when an opportunity presents itself that's really outside of our comfort zone. Mm. We may be being called upon to, to see ourselves in a different way, mm -hmm. to expand our capacity to step up and take, uh, take on more responsibility. And just because we've never done it before does not mean that we cannot do it and we cannot do it well. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I tell myself often, and this started right out of college, it's like, if anybody can do it, I can do it. Period. <laughs> you know? That might be a little bit too much, mm -hmm. but for the most part, recognize that we're all humans and we're all figuring out things. Mm -hmm. And if we have a level of curiosity and a willingness to uh, learn, we can do things. We can do a lot more than we give ourselves credit for. I agree. Um... I think we say it is like every single week. Your inner world is a reflection of your outer world. And I think a lot of the times... V vice versa. It, I'm sorry, your outer world is a reflection <laughs> of your inner world, right? Mm -hmm. And so we think because if I don't got I don't got I don't got I can't do. And the reality is it, it's already inside you. Like brand, th I use brand therapy as an example because that's the framework I created to teach branding to black and brown business owners in the most layman terms way, but for able for us to develop the skill set of storytelling. Mm -hmm. Nothing new about branding that I'm teaching, my way of doing it yes. is different. Yeah. And so when I created this method, I literally had no idea <laughs> what I was doing. I just started feeling things connecting in my mind, like, okay, this makes sense from this perspective. And then a framework was created. Now I could have been like, well, they already wrote textbooks on this and there's a whole, you know, you can literally get master's degrees in branding. But I was like, you know, there you have a way of doing things. And then I understand that I'm going to have mm -hmm. a way of doing things. And it kind of, it's not kind of, it's pushed me, like mm -hmm. ejected me out of kind of a normal framework of branding into positioning that I'm still growing into. Mm -hmm in a lot, a lot of ways. Well, you know, it's interesting because I'm thinking about a really mundane example, but I remember being in a um, uh, uh, store one day, mm -hmm. and and I'm trying to think of like a, like a Home Depot. Like okay. That kind of store, right? And I was, it wasn't Home Depot, but it was... Um, like a Home Depot. Like, Home Depot. <laughs> like Lowe's or something? Yeah. Okay. I was in Lowe's or something. And I was uh, asking someone if he knew a plumber because I needed to have this inside of my toilet uh, repaired. And he says, you can do that. And mm -hmm. I said, I can't. He said, he said, yeah, you can do that. You don't need a plumber. You can do it yourself. And so, um, you know, he gave me a little bit of guidance. I went online and looked up videos on how to change the inside and, and did it myself right and so it it, it just was a one of those examples of on every level mm -hmm. you know we we have the capacity we were given this mm -hmm. you know here to be able to think and to be able to research and be able to figure out things yeah. and really we're, we're able to do many many things mm, yes yeah, see I love this someone said Needs will always exist. Service is always needed. There is a space for every need to be served. Absolutely. Ashe. Absolutely. Come on, y'all. Preach it in the comments. I love that. Yes. <laughs> yes. So just know that the, the, the self-doubt and feelings of uh, needing to be perfect or striving for perfection are the kinds of things that actually keep us stuck. Mm -hmm. And so we need to be able to sort of let that go. 
uh, know that in everything that we attempt, not always will we be successful on the first try, yes. or we may have a few stumbles, but life is a game and our job is to get up and play again if we get knocked down, mm -hmm. basically. In the words Keep at of it. Aaliyah, dust yourself off and try again. Dust yourself off and try again. <laughs> so in terms of how we begin to really uh, move out of this place of stuckness and there are a couple of kind of practical things that we could do. Uh, one is to really spend some time connecting internally, figuring out what is it that you really want? Mm -hmm. What is it you want to accomplish, want to achieve? Um, and, and, and why do you want that? I mean, the why is also Very a big important, important thing. Mm -hmm. And it will go a long ways in terms of um, determining whether or not we get that. Yes, and that's actually the first, if, if one of the first keys to the branding workshop that I do. <laughs> it's kind of funny because you're literally talking about my branding framework. But and I don't go to it. And she hasn't even been in the workshop. But yeah. the very first part is your personal narrative. Like, mm -hmm. what what brought you here? Mm -hmm. Like, not the, not the mission, vision, and all that. That comes later. Mm -hmm. But what is the internal thing that said, I needed to do this? Exactly. And then transforming that into a company story and then transforming that into a mission, vision, all that stuff. Those things are a reflection of our inner roles from small businesses to big enterprises. So it's very interesting because I'm like, she literally preached in last week's word from mm -hmm. that's, that's beautiful. <laughs> but identifying the why mm -hmm. so you can move forward with the story. And the why, I want to invite you to go deeper, like on a, on a, a kind of on an inner level. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes we have a why up here. Mm -hmm. That is, you know, like I feel like I can really make a contribution to the yeah. world. But really, what you want to do is make a lot of money, mm -hmm. you know. And so I think it's really important to get honest with yourself mm -hmm. about your why. Or you want to prove somebody wrong, you know, mm -hmm. like you, you want to prove to them that no, mm -hmm. you're not a failure, you're not going to be a failure if somebody's giving you those kind of messages. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, before you can get to the inspirational why, mm -hmm. you need to really go deep into the motivational why mm -hmm. and be willing to look at that honestly. Mm -hmm. and and then be able to move forward from there. I agree. I know mine was ownership of story. Mine has always been about everybody else because you know people like to talk and I you know, mm -hmm. I've always had uh, been in situations where people would own my story and my thing was well I'm going to own my own narrative mm -hmm. and then I said like well everybody should own their own narrative exactly. and then that made the, the shift but it did come from a place of self first which is I want to own exactly who I am how I show up and I don't care what anybody else interprets from it but I can't let their interpretation be the story that I tell myself. Absolutely, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So you can start, you know, like the tried and true method for getting out of stuckness is like making a list of pros and cons mm -hmm. of, of what it is you want to accomplish, what, what do you see as obstacles, what do you see as opportunities, but also um, maybe make a vision board to make it more concrete in your mind, visualize not the problem and a lot of times what happens is we get stuck in the area of where the challenge is right and we've got to make a leap we've got to make a mental leap to the place where we see ourselves in the fulfillment mm -hmm. you know so mm -hmm. visualize what it is you want to feel like what it is you want to experience as though it's already happening exactly you know so it's a, a really important, uh, and even when we pray, for instance, a lot of times we pray for the stuck thing, you mm -hmm. know, like, oh Lord, help me, help me, this is mm -hmm. this, you know, like, no, we should be expressing. You just get me out of this one this time. Yeah, yeah, if you please save yeah. me from this, right? Yeah. Instead of, you know, being in a place of gratitude for the experiences that um, have gotten us this far, and gratitude for the ones that are going to take us forward. Exactly. You know, just really uh, being in a place of claiming it and and expressing gratitude for it. Seeing past the now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The other thing I want to say is it's helpful to be open to other perspectives. 
we can get a little bit of tunnel vision and we can get really uh, insular in our thinking mm -hmm. and we think there's only one way to do things mm -hmm. and if we can't see our way out of it through that way um, we we're stuck yes yeah so just being open to other perspectives having an open mindset yeah i think i mentioned it before but i call i have a council shout out to the council and it's got tiers there's chiefs and then there's like my elders like Ms. Gwendolyn and a bunch of other folks that i have entrusted to give me guidance on several levels and then there's my homies where it may not meet y'all level of expertise but i always have very trusted souls around me that i can say okay I think I'm tripping, but I need you to help me get to the why I'm tripping. Because right now, what's going on in here is not actually leading me to freedom. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm putting down chains on myself. Mm -hmm. So I need you guys to navigate through that with me. And I actually did that a lot this past weekend with some of the things we were talking about earlier. Mm -hmm. And allowing myself to express and then hear back. Not just bent and being like, okay, I'm done. But being like, okay, here's the expression. What do you hear? And they're like, oh, I hear this. I hear that. And in being able to then find a truth that I was willing to accept at the time and I've now grown in my understanding. But it's very important to keep souls and not just people who are yes men, because I know a lot of people who do that, but people who can actually speak life back into you and help you through the shifts of stuckness. And of course, you know, one of my favorite things is to go inside, you know, to really uh, be willing to access that deeper wisdom that's already living within us as well and yes. so that's one of the reasons why we meditate that's one of the reasons why i'm always inviting connection with the great compassionate light mm -hmm. because it it really will shine through to what the solution needs to be yes and it will really help us be able to see those places where we're not quite yet able to see the underlying motivation yeah. or the underlying truth, truth. of yeah. that situation. So mm -hmm. I want to encourage everyone to work your inner world, you know, to really be willing to um, to dive in and, and know that it's not necessarily something that you get like an immediate answer for, mm -hmm. but that if you're willing to allow the question to be there the answer will emerge the yes. answer will appear yes so and that's always helpful yes and i you know i, I always do consult with the inner world but sometimes my inner world is too what is it the term too much is there's a lot going on before i can even get into yeah. the inner part and so the outer you know inner outer world reflecting the inner world i keep people around me who are that's beautiful who are a reflection of that inner world when i'm safely there yeah, beautiful. Yeah, beautiful. so then I can then get yeah. in, like, okay, now I'm going to go pray. Because <laughs> now I can actually hear what I need to hear instead of hearing myself over and over and over and over and over again. Beautiful, beautiful. So just a couple of ways to kind of shift mindset is really think about things like, like, um, is there another way that I can look at the situation? Um, how will it be? Um, five years from now if I continue down this path mm -hmm. where will I be in 10 years if I continue down if I shift over here and try this thing what are the possibilities so it's really just um, inner and mental kind of exercise mm -hmm. to allow us to get outside of those places where we get locked in our patterns of feeling not enough not good enough, not prepared, um, afraid that we might lose something, some of the things that we talked about earlier, mm -hmm. you know, so it, it enables us to, to move past those things. Mm -hmm. So those were some tips. Yeah. And of course, moving your body is always important, connecting with nature, That's go for a walk. Mm -hmm. I mean, sometimes if you find that you can't think through a problem or you, you just don't know what the next step is, you know, go for a little meditative walk, you mm -hmm. know, be in nature, allow that energy to come in and and nourish you and serve you in that way. Yeah, I did that yesterday. I had yeah. rose gelato and walked around the lake. Ah, cool, yeah. cool. Yes, and sometimes it sounds delicious. Some of the, it was really good. <laughs> I was like, I was 
very, I love gelato over ice cream, but the rose part, everybody knows rose is like my thing. So when I saw it, I was like, energy. Yes, I love that. Um, one of the questions I do ask myself is why a lot. Like if I feel like in, incompetent, I'll say why. Because da 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 da, da why? Because da 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 da, and because then, then you have to start being honest with yourself at some yeah. point, like, and then you'll get at some point. It may not happen in that first set of whys, and you may get frustrated at yourself, but at some point you'll get to a place where you're like, I feel incompetent because, and mine was asking for help or asking for space to like allow myself to have a break. Yes. Instead of saying I needed a break, I was like, oh, I'll just work from home. Mm -hmm. And then it's like, well, why are you doing that? Because I feel like if I did, because it, and when I get down to it, like, well, I don't want everything to fall apart. And I'm like, well, that's, if it all falls apart in a day, then we've got bigger we've got issues, bigger issues <laughs> than that, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And so the question of why always helps me get down to the root as well. So, mm -hmm. and even, you know, five years from now, I may not even be knowing about this, but today, why, 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 yeah, why, Yeah, beautiful, why, why? beautiful, beautiful. Mm -hmm. So, shall we do a little, a little meditation? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> why not? Why not? Okay. <laughs> so this is uh, the Tuesdays. And as you know, we on Tuesdays, we spend most of the time chatting about these things. And mm -hmm. I love talking to Christina because she has these really wonderful thoughts and ideas. <laughs> and, and Man, I was being around y'all. Her counsel. Yeah, <laughs> and, like, I'm and all of that. Y'all, I'm blessed and grateful to have elders that I can have these conversations with. So yeah. thank you. Yeah. Thank yeah. you for being open to me. Yes, I'm, I'm very, very open to you. Thank you so much. It's a gift. So, so why don't we just Did take you? a moment? I know, I know. <laughs> Stop I know. <laughs> Stop <laughs> God. We cry a lot up in here, we by do. the way, so just in we case you don't do. know. You know? <laughs> You know, sometimes we just like get into the energy and the next thing you know, like the tears are just pouring out. Mm -hmm. But it's a good thing because we're making space internally. So. Crying at the COVID is the rest of us that you're always crying at the COVID. <laughs> That's funny. Okay. Okay. So now we're going to just take a few moments and we're going to try to get Bring it back to quiet. <laughs> okay. Okay. Let's take a deep breath. Okay. Exhale. It's joy. Again. Exhale. One more time. Exhale. And feel yourself connected in this beautiful energetic field that we established at the outset. surrounded by and infused with the great compassion and light. Deep breath in. Exhale. Deep breath in. Exhale. One more. Let your attention drop down to your heart center, the center of your chest. We know that wherever the attention goes, energy flows there too. And in this field of grace, this field of light, this field of being held in possibility, Breathe in and just allow that to be so. We seek the help of the great compassionate light and seeing whatever we need to see 
whatever we need to understand. The deeper why. What is our motivation? And know that there's no need to change whatever it is, but it's necessary to see and acknowledge it. Take a deep breath again. Exhale. And we seek the great compassionate flight assistance and magnetizing to us all of the resources that we need to accomplish what we want to set out to do. that we will leave this space today free to move forward into action. That we release all comparison, all feelings of inadequacy, all feelings of being stuck. And we turn it over to the great compassionate light. together in the Namaskar Mudra at the heart center. As we give thanks to the God of our understanding, to our higher sacred self, to the divine presence, to our ancestors, to our teachers and guides, and to the great compassionate Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Peace within, peace outside, peace all around us. Ashe. Ashe, Ashe, Ashe. Thank you guys so much for joining us today. It's always a beautiful session with you, Ms. Quinlan. Um, join us on Thursday for a full meditation, 30 minutes, starting from 1230 to 1. Um, if, in case you didn't know, meditations are in person. So if you would like to come into COBIS for meditation, you're more than welcome. Or you can catch us virtually right here on IG Live. Um, I hope you guys have a beautiful F-U-L-L rest of your day. And we can carry this light with you. I'm so carrying this joy that we just shared into the rest of my afternoon. And we will see y'all later. Oh, this Saturday is Rooftop Wellness. Yes! So Rooftop Wellness is an initiative with COVID, Moyo Institute, IBX Fitness, and myself and Miss, <laughs> Miss Cindy, I Love Randy's Kitchen, where we have a two-hour wellness experience. And it's Earth Day, so I'm really excited for this. We start the session at 9 a.m. with Dancing With Me, but some body movement, rolling into body movement, AKA calisthenics with IBX Fitness. Following, we'll have closing our body practice with meditation, and then we'll head down from the roof of COVID to the kitchen to get our grub on with Miss Cindy of I Love Granny's Kitchen. Everything starts at nine. Each session is 30 minutes and the entire event is free. So if you would like to roll on through, go ahead. The link to um, not subscribe, register is in the bio of COVID's Richmond's IG account. And we will see y'all on Thursday. Have a wonderful, peaceful day. Bye y'all. <laughs>